Okay, so if you have a look at the screen, as with most things in, in complex numbers, if we start off thinking about what happens with the real numbers, it often kind of falls out some interesting results from the complex numbers. Okay, so understanding the real numbers is a good place to start, and then thinking about how they extend to the complex numbers. So on the screen, what I've thought about is squaring a complex number. Oh, sorry, squaring a real number rather. So I've literally just got a real number line. Okay, and I'm just going to pick a number, and I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to square it again. So um, Jean Sebastian, give me a real number, any real number you like. Three. Okay, square it. Nine. Square it again. Seven. Oh. oh three, Hang on, 81. Oh, nine oh, squared. 81? Yeah, 81. Perfect. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, so I'm just squaring the number you've just got. Oh, yeah, yeah, does that make sense? So yeah, so it goes three, square that, you get nine. Square that, you get 81. Square that, you get... Kind of too big. Yeah, <laughs> too big to calculate. Somebody on a calculator. Six five six one. Square that. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Forty-three million forty-six thousand something. Okay, so forty-three million something or other. Okay. So are you happy? The point which I'm trying to make here is that if you start off with some real numbers and you square it, and then you square that, and then you square that, and you square that, so you keep doing this squaring iteration. If you like, if I take some real number, let's call it R. And if I call that n, so this is the real number that I choose at any particular point in that squaring process, okay? The idea is that whatever that squared is, that's going to give me my next number. Does that make sense? Okay, so I just take a number, any number you like, square it, that will give you your next number. Square that, that will give you your next number. Square that, that will give you your next number. Okay. okay, so that's literally all I've done here. I've just written it as an iterative process. Now. The number which you happened to choose, which you started off with, was 3. Okay, that was your initial starting point. And are you happy that got pretty big pretty quickly? Okay, so that kind of exploded pretty quickly. So what I've got here on the screen is what will happen if I pick different numbers and I keep squaring them. Okay, so you can see here that if I pick a number like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, in fact, all of these numbers just explode off on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay. But what about if I pick a negative number? For example, if I pick negative 2. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Exactly. Oh, not quite, actually. Negative 2 squared is... Positive. Positive 4. What's 4 squared? Uh, 16. Positive 16. Then square that, it's going to be uh, positive, positive, positive. So even if you start off with a negative number, first time you square it, it'll become positive, and then it'll be positive for every iteration after that. So again, we still get this kind of weird thing whereby... Power. Sorry? Third power. Oh, yeah, so I'm not worried about third powers. I'm just worried about the squaring, first of all. Okay. okay? So squaring is what I'm focusing on here. Um, yeah, so basically, most of the numbers that I can pick, most of the real numbers that I can pick, will basically explode. They'll just get really, really big. Okay? We call that divergent. Okay? So because they explode off to infinity, we call it divergent. Okay? Now, the word that I'm going to use here is stable versus unstable. So if it goes off to infinity, it gets really big, I'm going to say the number you started with, that's unstable, okay, with this particular iterative process, because it just explodes, okay? But there are some numbers where they're not divergent. They are convergent. In other words, they are stable, okay? And look on the screen, numbers like this would be fine. So can you see all the numbers between, like, negative 1 and 1, they are all stable. Yeah? Because they don't explode. They kind of converge. In fact, they converge to zero. They get really small. So take, for example, like a half. You square that, you get a quarter. Square that, you get a sixteenth. Square that, you get 256. Yep. And then square that, and you carry on going, going, going. So basically, again, smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? Obviously, if you choose a number like 1, square that, you get 1. Square that, you get 1. Square that, you get 1. So that's also stable. Negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. And square that, square that, square that. It's always going to be 1. From then on. So basically there are some real numbers that are stable versus unstable. So some go to infinity, some don't. Now watch what happens when I think about um, the complex numbers. Okay, so you can see this is my complex plane and what I'm drawing here is first of all the number that I choose. So for example if I choose a number like this, can you see that every iteration I've kind of connected together with a line? So if I take that complex number here, which I've got on the screen, 
right, the, the white one, square it, it moves to the next blue number. So you can see that dot line there. Then square that, it moves to the next one, square that to move that one. So can you see these are stable at the moment, right? Because you kind of get all these stable things, they're all going to zero. But if I choose a number, say, out here, can you see it just explodes? Right? So these are all unstable. So stable, 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 unstable, unstable, stable, 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 stable. Okay? So all I'm literally doing is I'm taking a number, squaring it, gives me my new one, square it, gives me my new one, square it, gives me my new one. And basically, if I keep squaring it and it goes to zero, it means it's convergent in this case. Right? But what if I change this? What if, instead of just squaring it to get my new one, what if I add something? So I square it, add something, square it, add something. And the point is, in this case, I'm going to add the same thing every time. So in this case, watch what happens if I just take a number like, I don't know, 1 uh, plus i, and watch what happens if I just use different values of this, okay? So can you see it's kind of doing weird things out here? Now actually, let me just try a different one. Let me try, for example, something like 1. Okay, so that's unstable, that's stable. That's unstable, that's stable. And look, you get really pretty patterns just by adding different amounts each time. Now it's important to emphasize the fact of what I'm doing here. I'm squaring it, and then in between each process of squaring, I'm adding the same number each time. So in this case, the number which I'm adding is like negative 0.8, negative 0.4i, for example, that little, blue, that little yellow circle where my cursor is, right? And you can notice that if I start with one, and if I keep squaring it, but each time in between the squaring, I add some complex number, you notice that some of them give me really pretty patterns. So this is all unstable, 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 but these are stable, right? And you get some really pretty patterns which occur. So look at those, yeah? So just by thinking about what's happening with your squaring process each time, you get some really, really pretty patterns. Now, if I think about what the set boundaries would look like, have a look at this. So what do we mean by set boundaries? The set boundaries are the regions where when I add something, it results in stability. Things like this. Things which I've got on the screen at the moment, it's stable. It's converging to a number, right? Something like this is unstable. It's not converging to a number. So if I think about the set boundaries whereby I get stability, watch what happens, okay? So look at that. So I get some really pretty patterns. Now what these dots represent is that if I choose any number which I'm adding within this set, it's going to result in stability. Okay, so any complex number which I'm adding in this set is going to be stable. Any complex number in this set is going to be stable, but outside it's not. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, what do those four, say you're out of it and there's those four clusters, like do you go in those, is it yeah. I don't understand, because that, that's the boundary, right? But yep. if you go out, I saw like clusters forming there. Like, there's like multiple. Yeah, so basically, if I start off with any number within this set boundary. Oh, from that, from that yeah, boundary. exactly. So basically, I'm adding the same number each time, um, which is how the set is formed. But the point is, whatever number I choose within that set boundary, it's going to be stable. But as soon as I pick a number outside the set boundary, it's going to be unstable. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. So, for example, things like this, if I try and find some, yeah, that's good, that's like those ones. Right, okay. So, basically, and this is going to be difficult because it's quite a small set boundary. Yeah, it won't go. I can't get inside those set boundaries. Um, but, yeah, basically, if I could somehow get inside those set boundaries, then, yeah, it would be stable. But there's sort of little clusters out the outside. Yeah. Okay. Now, we call these Julia sets, okay? It was named after a guy called Julia who was thinking about these things. In fact, as I said again, um, he did not visualize this stuff. He thought about it just purely abstract, right? So yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so basically he was thinking about this. He was thinking, well, where's stability, where's instability? And you can see you get some really, really pretty patterns which occur. So for example, that one is really, really pretty, such like that. Now. Somebody called Benoit Mandelbrot came along, and he only died recently, actually, who, who looked at this same idea, so you might have heard of Mandelbrot before, who looked at this same idea and he said, hmm, could I find the boundary of all of the ones where I'm squaring it? So uh, all, the, all the complex numbers that I'm adding, right? Could I find um, me the boundary whereby if I start with one and think about the number which I'm adding, where does that result in stability? Okay, so literally, 
Yep, exactly. So literally just start with one and think about all of the numbers which you're adding and think about the set of those. Okay, so for example, um, yep, sets around there, yep, sets down there. Okay, now if you do that, you get this pretty pattern. Okay, so literally, if you think about all of the points where C is stable, okay, so you just start with one and you square it and you add something, square it and you add something. If you think about all of the different points whereby adding on that C results in stability, you get this. Okay, so I'm just going to start painting it. So literally, I'm just doing a computation here um, and you get some really pretty patterns which occur. Okay, so there you go. So it's basically done a path, but you kind of get the idea. So basically, if I start off with one, and if I square that number and add on any of these numbers within this shaded set, okay, to one, and I keep squaring and adding on that same number, squaring, adding on that same number, it's going to result in stability. Any number outside of that set, which I'm adding on, is going to result in instability, or it's going to be divergent, okay? Now, has anybody seen this set before? Sure, okay. So this set here, it's called the Mandelbrot set. It's an example of a fractal. Now, <laughs> the best way I can describe a fractal is it's infinitely jagged. The idea is you keep zooming in on a particular location and you're still gonna have this kind of, un uh, you're still gonna have this kind of jagged effect around the outside, no matter how much you zoom in. It's never gonna smooth out, okay? Um, other examples of fractals, you kind of get weird things like, if I draw a tree, or across, something like this, okay? And then basically on each of these arms, I can also draw my cross. Let's draw one down here. And in fact, I could draw more of them. It's like pipe never ends. Exactly, it never ends. You can keep zooming in, you're still gonna get the same thing or similar things back again. And then yeah, you can kind of zoom in on this and you can get a smaller version of this again, and a smaller version of this again, a smaller version of this again. So basically the idea is, and I haven't drawn it in its completeness, but the idea is there'd be like lots of these patterns repeated over and over and over again. No matter how many times you zoom in, you're still gonna get this pattern over and over again, okay? So this really interesting result, it starts off very, very simple. You just take a number, in this case one, square it, and then if as long as you choose any number within this set, you know that that's process of squaring it, adding that number, squaring it, adding that number, will result in stability, okay? It will always result in stability. If you choose any number outside of that set, so for example, something like one plus i, my favorite number, that is not gonna result in stability. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you get some really pretty patterns which occur, okay? And I think this is quite cool, because it starts off with a really simple idea, and just thinking about the complex numbers, right? Um, and just thinking about the various different sets and things, you get some really pretty patterns. Okay, well, well like, yeah, go on. The pattern, uh, st stable uh, region, uh, is very hard, I think. Yeah, exactly. And these guys, Julia, Mandelbrot, they were looking at this stuff without the aid of computer diagrams, right? They didn't have this visualization in their head. They were literally uh, doing it from an algebraic point of view. You can't able to determine the region yes. which is stable. Yes, Poof. exactly. Yeah, I mean, this is life work. Uh, like, did they find any uh, method to yes, the patterns. Yes, exactly. So they had some kind of iterative method, a numerical method to be able to determine it, but they did not be able to visualize this pattern yeah, until yeah. far later. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and there are some formulas. Exactly. Which you can apply. Exactly. Every, uh, every iteration. Uh, yeah. Yep. And you, you, it gives the pattern. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, just thinking about these patterns and these methods which they came up with, they were able to determine um, where regions would be stable and unstable without visualizing it, which I kind of blows my yeah. mind, yeah. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to show you here is that maths can be very, very beautiful when you just kind of think about very simple things, right? So coming back to Gauss's thing, thinking deeply about simple things, literally start with one, square it, and just add on some complex numbers. Whatever complex numbers you add on which result in stability will fall in this set, yeah? And again, you get this really pretty pattern. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, oh yeah, there's, there's loads of different variations from this. So good, so you're kind of thinking about mathematician, you're sort of saying, okay, this is interesting, but what if we think about three dimensions or four dimensions or five dimensions, yeah? And it kind of gets interesting. But yeah, so that was just kind of a taste of complex numbers showing you they're more than just uh, things that we have to do.